solving trigonometric equations. So now we need to be able to do the algebra to solve equations involving trigonometry. The main thing you need to be fully up and aware of is your exact values. Now these can be a little bit challenging because there is a process to follow, but once you've got a hold of the process, every single one of these equations is exactly the same. The process is as follows. One, will, is your answer positive or negative? And that will determine what quadrant that you'll be in or what quadrants you'll be dealing with. Two, reference slash base angle. What base angle will get you the answer that you're looking for? Three, if it's been dilated, so in other words, it's got an N value on the inside, we need to multiply the domain by N. Four, we list all the possible solutions, and then five, solve for X. Example one, find all the values of X between zero and four pi, where sine X is equal to one over root two. Draw my exact values triangle, and I think you'll find, there it is, pi on four relates to one over root two. So I know that's gonna be my base angle involved. But first things first, that we need to establish, is the answer positive or negative? There's no negative sign, so it's a positive. So therefore I need to know what quadrants is sign positive in? It's in the first and second quadrants. The next thing I need to do is to list the base angle. And we have established that. It's pi on four is equal to the base angle. The domain. The domain here is we want all the values of x between zero and four pi. Since there's no n value, there's no n next to the x, we don't need to multiply the domain at all. We just need to make sure we have every possible answer to this question between zero and four pi. So now we begin the solving. So x here is equal to, so in the first quadrant, it's going to be zero plus pi on four, because that gets me into the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, it gets me my pi minus pi on 4. Hooray! But that's only going around the circle once. This is between 0 and 4 pi. So if I was to quickly draw, that's uh, the first going around the circle. We've got these two um, angles in here. But what about when it's greater than 2 pi and less than 4 pi? Well, I need to go around the circle again. So 2 pi... 3 pi, and there's 4 pi. So I need these two angles as well. So it will be 2 pi plus pi on 4. That would get me into the first quadrant there. And 3 pi minus pi on 4. So this will be equal to pi on 4. Pi take away pi on 4 is 3 pi on 4. 2 pi plus pi on 4 it makes that 9 pi on 4. 3 pi minus pi on 4 will get me 11 pi on 4. And that's it. We have now solved the trigonometric equation. Solve for x given sine x is equal to negative root 3 on 2. And we've been given a uh, domain that's between pi and 5 pi. Is the answer positive or negative? It is a negative answer. So therefore, for sine, where is sine positive and negative? So it's negative in the second and fourth, sorry, the third and fourth quadrants. What's the base angle? So the base angle, that gets me root three on two. So I'm going to have to look that one up. So let's go and get my exact values triangle. There it is. Well, there's root three and uh, there's two. So I need root three to be the opposite. I need two to be the hypotenuse. So 
it must be this one here. So that is pi on three, because opposite over hypotenuse root three over two. The domain. So the domain, the answers that I need have to be between pi and five pi. So if I was to draw that as pictures, if I go around the circle once, there's pi, and then I go around the circle again, so it's starting from two pi to three pi, and then I go around the circle again, so from four pi to five pi, Essentially what this is saying is I want all the answers that start from pi to uh, to 2 pi, from 2 pi all the way to 4 pi, and then 4 pi to 5 pi. So using those colored, uh, the quadrants, I'm going to tick every time that they appear in the third and fourth quadrant. So third, fourth, third, fourth. So we'll need and the last section here doesn't get into the third or fourth quadrant, so therefore I don't need those. So one, two, three, four, I need four possible answers. So we're going to solve accordingly. So x is equal to, so it's gonna be pi on three, so we're gonna start by doing pi plus pi on three, two pi minus pi on three, so that's these two sorted, so that one, that one sorted. Then I need to go into the next circle, so 3 pi plus pi on 3, that's this one sorted now, and then that's 4 pi minus pi on 3, that's that one sorted. Since from 4 pi to 5 pi, that's in the first and second quadrants where sine is positive, we don't need to worry about those. And so now I just need to neaten these up, so this becomes 4 pi on 3, this becomes 7 pi on 3, this becomes uh, no, 10. <laughs> 10 pi on 3, and this becomes, and that's going to be 11 pi on 3. And there are our answers. Solve for x given cos 3x is equal to 1 half, x is between 0 and 360. So this one is in degrees. First of all, is our answer positive or negative? It's a positive. So when is cos positive? Well, it will be the first and fourth quadrants. And so what's the base angle? Well, according to my exact values triangle, what value of cos will get me one half? Well, that's gonna be pi on three. How did I know that? My exact values triangle. Uh, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's one over two, so adjacent hypotenuse, and that's how I can use my exact values triangle. This time, now, according to my question, my domain, the answers have to be zero and 360, but I got three X's. So I need three times the number of normal answers. So three X, so zero times three is zero. 360 times three is going to make that, what's that, 360, double that is 720. 720 plus another 360 is uh, 1080. What we're going to do is we're going to go around the circle several times actually, because again, we are going, we have that three X's shrunk everything. So we need uh, triple the amount of answers that we need, we normally would need. So it's 3x, we take what's inside, 3x is equal to, uh, in this case we want the first and fourth quadrant, so it's going to be 0 plus uh, pi on 3. Oh, actually, now that's an interesting point. Uh, I've said pi on 3, haven't I? It's in degrees. That was awfully silly of me, that was close. Uh, it's actually going to be 60 degrees. Oh, that was close. Here's me almost making a silly mistake. Again, classic thing, always check what you're doing. Uh, 60 degrees and then 360 take away 60 degrees. Then we want 360 plus 60 degrees. Then we want 720 take away 60 degrees. Then we want uh, 720 plus 60 degrees. And so the last one should be uh, 1080 minus 60 degrees. 
There we go. So just in case you're confused, what the hell has he done there? So the first circle goes from 0, 180 to 360. And so we wanted the first and fourth quadrants in each of these. So that's the 0 plus 60 is that one. The 360 minus 60 is that one. Then we go around the circle again, starting from 360. And then we get to all the way down to 720. And again, we get the those two. So that's these two sorted. I should also add a little of those ones as well. And then we go around the, the circle again from 720 degrees to 180 degrees. And we again, we want the first and fourth quadrants. And so that's going to be those angles down there. So that's where these numbers all came from. And again, it's always plus or minus the reference angle. So that's become 60 degrees, 300 degrees. Oh dear, that's uh, 420 degrees, 500 and something, 560, yeah, 560 degrees. And that's gonna be uh, 780 degrees and that's gonna be 1020 degrees. So that's what 3x is equal to, but we need to solve for x. So we divide each of these by 3. So this becomes 60 divided by 3, 300 divided by 3, 420 divided by 3, 560 divided by 3, 780 divided by 3, 1020 divided by 3. So this becomes 20 degrees. This becomes 100 degrees. This becomes 100 and something. 160 degrees. No, that's 140 degrees. Somebody can't do maths. Uh, 140 degrees. Uh, this will be one. Uh, one five. Oh, this is going to be a horrible fraction. What? Hang on. Have I stuffed something up? 720 divided by. Take away six. Oh, idiot. Oh, yeah. I can see what I've done wrong. Would help if I could subtract. There we go. So that becomes uh, six. Whilst I'm here, I clearly can't trust my own mental arithmetic. So I divide by 30. there. So that's 220, 780 divided by 3, 260, and then 1020 divided by 3 is 340. So there are our solutions. Now we can check to make sure that this is right because x has to be between 0 and 360. Uh, none of our answers are outside of that original domain. And then we've also got one other foolproof method, which is again using the calculator. So when solving on the, uh, the CAS calculator, we also need to make sure we restrict our uh, responses. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the solve function, and then we're going to go with trig cos 3x equals one half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the vertical line from math three and do zero less than X, less than 360. Uh, and then I'm going to make sure to change it from radians to degrees. And let's see if we're right. 20, 100, 140, 220, 260 and 340. Thank heavens.